Now, before the break, we told you about Scotland's new hate crime laws, which come into effect today. In the past few minutes, the First Minister, Hamza Youssef, has been asked about the laws and the criticism of free speech campaigners. We're proud of the Hate Crime Act. Uh, we have seen, I'm afraid, not just in the UK, of course Scotland, but right across many parts of the world, this kind of rising tide of hatred uh, against people because of their protected characteristics. And Scotland, uh, having this hate crime legislation, <clears throat> protecting people, giving them that protection from hatred, while at the same time protecting people in terms of the freedom of expression, for me ensures that we've got a piece of legislation that will be enacted and implemented in a way that is absolutely balanced, uh, makes sure it absolutely protects people in their freedom of expression, but guards people from, as I say, that rising tide of hatred we've seen far too often in our society. <coughs> The Police Federation represent the people who are going to be having to enforce this law. They say it's a recipe for disaster. Is it? I couldn't disagree uh, more, I'm afraid. Uh, if you hear what the Chief Constable has to say, uh, of course, there has been appropriate training in place, but also the police officers have been dealing with hatred for many, many decades and been doing it very sensibly indeed. Let's take the new offences, the stirring up offences uh, that have been uh, the, 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 the focus of a lot of discourse and discussion. They've been in existence since 1986 in terms of racial stirring up offence of uh, hatred. Uh, I believe that the new offences that have been created, they will be, uh, they will be policed uh, in, 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 again, a very similar way, policed sensibly. And, of course, the police deal with vexatious complaints on probably a daily basis, and therefore will undoubtedly, if there are vexatious complaints, be able to deal with that in a way that, again, is sensible. This bill is about protecting people against that rising tide of hatred. We see far too prevalent in our society nowadays. But what lots of people are saying is that this is going to radically increase the number of vexatious complaints that the police are going to have to deal with and they're already not able to cope with the demands being placed on their resources. Is, is policing Twitter spats really the best use of their time and energy? Well, firstly, there is absolutely no evidence for that claim whatsoever. And secondly, the police deal with vexatious complaints every single day on a whole range of legislative, uh, a whole, whole range of legislation. They deal with those vexatious complaints uh, effectively and sensibly. Let's not take away from the fact we've got a hate crime act in place, implemented in force, because there is far too much hatred in our society. And often those who are the first ones to criticise the act are also the first ones to tell me they have a zero tolerance approach to hatred. So now we've got an act in place has appropriate freedom of expression safeguards, but also protects people from hatred. It's an act that everybody should get behind. There are lots of concerns online about the impact it will have on freedom of speech. and There are lists being circulated amongst some activists on Twitter today of accounts to monitor. There's lots of concerns that people will be targeted. Is that something that you recognise? The only concern you should have when it comes to the new stirring up of hate, the new stirring up offences is if your behaviour is threatening or abusive and intends to stir up hatred. And, and by the way, even if that is the case, there are some defences, such as the reasonable person defence and so on and so forth. So unless your behaviour is threatening or abusive and intends to stir up hatred, then you have nothing to worry about in terms of the new offences being created. If your behaviour is threatening or abusive and does intend to stir up hatred against Jews or Muslims or disabled people or gay people, then I think we should the law should protect those people uh, from uh, who are the victims of that potential hatred. And I think that's really important. So whether what's happening online or Twitter lists that are being created all of that, frankly, is irrelevant. What, re what is relevant is the threshold for criminality which will apply in terms of the act that's coming into force. But the row around people like J.K. Rowling saying that they are not, they're not being hateful, they're not being hateful, but what they're saying is being interpreted as hate. That's the problem, is that who decides what is hateful and what isn't? Well, who decides what is hateful in terms of criminal law is who has always decided what is hateful in terms of criminal law. That is the police who then provide a report to the, the Crown and Procurator Fiscal Service if there is a sufficiency of evidence uh, to, 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 ch to charge, the Crown will do that. It is not Twitter police, it is not activists, it is not the media, it is not, thank goodness, even politicians who decide uh, ultimately whether or not a crime has been committed. It will be the police, the investigation, investigate in the Crown and the threshold for criminality is incredibly high. In fact, it's higher in the new stirring up offences than the racial stirring up offence which has existed without controversy since 1986.